Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I've had a great day. Today we are in Michigan at one of the ultimate Ford GT Ford dealerships around that being Pat Milliken Ford. I believe these guys are the highest selling uh, new Ford GT dealerships in, in the country. And well, you notice it all around. They have so many amazing new Fords, especially like the one right behind me, a brand new Ford Mustang Dark Horse. This one is just delivered. It's going to be uh, unboxed and uh, the owner here, which you'll see shortly on camera in this video, he's taking delivery. We have the awesome opportunity to take out this new Ford Mustang Dark Horse and to see what it's like to drive. I've not driven one yet, shockingly, and I can't wait. I come from such an amazing past of Mustangs. Uh, I love every model that they've came out with from the GT 500s to the GT 350s. This is going to be not a Shelby for trying to create a new name, a new recognizable nameplate, similar to what Dodge is doing with the Demon 170. They're not going fully off traditions in the past from years ago. They're trying to create new modernized nameplates that inspire uh, performance. This is going to be the most track capable and the highest horsepower 5 liter Coyote yet. I can't wait. Let's do a quick walk around of what it's like when this first gets delivered, what all comes from the factory that needs to be installed at the dealership, and then let's take it out to see how it drives. Again, massive shout out to Pat Milliken Ford. The team here is fantastic from my experience working with them so far. Uh, the owner of this new Ford Mustang Dark Horse is named Joey, and he's actually one of the lead sales representatives out here. They even have the Ford GT service department and as you can tell right in front of us is a 4GT front underbelly that has the light saying 4GT service center. To my right is a 4GT tail light that is turned into a clock. This is the ultimate service department and I love that Ferrari logo right there hidden away. You got the 4GT seats and behind us are a few of the examples just coming in for, for regular uh, routine service. Uh, two 4GTs right here, a full white glove experience. I really do like how Ford does this and how the Pat Millica team out here have created a supercar level uh, service department experience for these supercars in front of me. I was talking with them, uh, asking questions about that new Mustang GTD because a Mustang that is built from the same team that builds the Ford GT, Multimatic from uh, Canada. I can't wait to find out more information, but let's talk about the vehicle right here in front of me, the new Ford Mustang Dark Horse. 500 horsepower and it's the most powerful five liter coyote yet. They're using brand new dual throttle bodies, dual intakes, and look at that, even the uh, headlights are making different effects. I think it's analyzing how we are walking up close to it. Yeah, the walk up effect with the key in my back pocket. That is so funny. So with the Dark Horse, obviously you can get the brand new iconic paint job they are offering. It is called Blue Ember Metallic. And as you can see, if I zoom in with the uh, counter angle of where the sun is hitting, you'll find these ember metallic flakes all within this dark blue paint shop. I love it. You guys know here on the channel, I'm such a big fan of metallic paint jobs and this, this color is perfect. In my opinion, you, you got to order the dark horse with this brand new blue ember metallic finish. Plus moving all the way up close, you do have the brand new dark horse emblem right here where like the Shelby logo would be. The owner, Joey, did make sure to get the, uh, the handling pack package Another uh, must have, in my opinion, giving you the 19 inch uh, track ready wheels with 305 uh, wide front Trofeo RS track capable rubber. And then out back, you do have 19s again, which is convenient, but uh, they are wider. This is the same contact patch that you do have on the Shelby GT500, which is a 315. I do like how they're not going after the tallest wheel ever because, yeah, a taller wheel would look good for filling out those gaps, but they are harder to maintain, I'd say, from my experience with 21 inch wheels, or when you go larger than that, yeah, it looks really good, but I don't think you see many race cars doing a GTLM running 21 or 23 inch wheels. So here's my question. Now I've driven all the, the Shelby models they came out with recently. I used to own uh, all of them from the GT350 to the 500. 
Plus, we have tested out the Mach 1 and every other model Ford has really come out with. So how does this new nameplate really stack up? This is a, a name that we've never seen in the past. We've always found Boss 302 or the Carroll Shelby influence on Ford products. Yet, for the past many years, Shelby never actually built these cars. The name was licensed. Ford knew how, well, since we're creating all this performance, this is our opportunity to do what Dodge is doing with their vehicles. So um, I think on the road, it's going to be very interesting to find how the next gen uh, Mustang, the S650 seventh generation, is going to feel with this new performance name. Is it going to be worth the price? You can get these up to around $70,000, $80,000. The carbon fiber wheel option is about $8,500 from what I believe. You can get the $5,000 painted stripes. This has the appearance package that is the uh, blue amber metallic, like I mentioned, with the dark horse badging with the stripes up top and the grabber blue brake calipers. This is nicely equipped, in my opinion. I, I like the looks of it, I'll be honest with you. I really do like the looks. And if you're wondering, this does not have installed the uh, lip on the front fenders because that is dealer installed. Let me show you real quickly what all comes from the factory that needs to be installed at the dealer. Right now, you'll see right away to my left, it's got all these white stickers. You're probably wondering, what is going on? Well, this is all straight from Dearborn, Michigan uh, for transportation. Same goes for the uh, front Front splitter not actually being installed. This is all done after the fact once it hits the dealership. Uh, and this is to protect the front end and other uh, high risk areas that they deemed was necessary from their board. <laughs> I do want to talk about this front grill. The inlets look like miniature versions of this same exact grill. Do you notice that? Look, that looks exactly the same as the shape of this grill. It's almost like a hexagon. It's elongated on the bottom versus the top. You'll find this really unique uh, matte finish for all the black accent points on the front bumper. Then you have these RTR style big intakes on the corners, channeling that airflow. Like I mentioned, dual intakes, and that is massive. The front hood vent does look more aggressive than my GT350 was back in the day, having these dual blades that are three on each side, right in front of the appearance package you get for the Dark Horse. It does say Dark Horse right here on the far right, Mustang Dark Horse. I'll be honest, the uh, A-pillar to the roof, having the black finish and having the Recaro sport bucket seats, it looks just like the Shelby's of the S550 generation. Though it does seem like the interior material has been a change, is a bit more widened out from my first glance look. The blue on the Recaro seats matches perfectly with the blue ember metallic. I'm a big fan of that. Altogether, having matte black accents with matte black performance wheels and the blue ember finish. This is my favorite way you can spec the new Dark Horse for sure. There are so many attributes of the S650 Mustang that remind me of the S550, particularly where it comes to the rear haunches, though this new generation just seems more angular and aggressive. At the same time, futuristic, because these harsh edges extend all the way to the raised rear spoiler out back. You, you can opt for the gurney flap. It looks aggressive and mean, and it follows suit with what I was just describing of the harsher angles. What are your thoughts of actually having a painted rear bumper now? In the past, this rear deck lid, right where the badge would be, this would be finished in a gloss black. A lot of owners, including myself, would notice over time that it seemed more prone to getting scratches. We are finding this trend of simpler taillights with modern vehicles and these tall independent eyes, you could call them, are not as three-dimensional as before. They just go straight up and wrap underneath the top of this trunk. Finally, moving all the way out back for the rear diffuser, it is extended a bit higher with this molded plastic finish, it feels like. The exhaust tips are quad tipped with the active functionality. We'll test them out very shortly. This is what I'm talking about right here. Seeing a Mustang with dual throttle bodies and dual intakes, it just looks very 
very, very aggressive. As I mentioned, this being the most powerful five liter Coyote yet for the internals, excluding like the dual intakes right in front of the engine, uh, you do have a newly balanced crankshaft with new uh, forged pistons with connecting rods that are inspired and taken from the GT500. So a lot of upgrades and features on this vehicle have been inspired off their high performance variants in the past, just like this cross member brace over the top, having the Dark Horse logo right there in the middle. I, I like the finish, I really do. How you have the carbon fiber cover that says five liter on top. Let me go ahead and introduce the uh, owner and then let's take it off for a spin and see how it drives. Hey Joey, dude, come on on camera, man. Hi. I really appreciate you uh, letting this happen, uh, making yeah, this you, happen guys. to yep, experience you your brand me. new uh, Dark Horse. How do you like it so far? I mean, I think it's gorgeous, the color. Uh, the way it looks, everything about it, I absolutely love it so far. Now, Joey right here comes from, well, a very lucrative line of Mustangs in the past. Yep. You've had, you know, GT500s. So this was the next logical step, right? The next best thing, they call it? Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, I've had nine total Mustangs since I was 17 years old. And my most recent one I still have is a 2022 Heritage uh, really? Shelby. So uh, this was the next best thing, and I was the first one on the list to get one. and and the boss is like, hey, you can order one. And I'm like, I got to do it. So. so this is basically delivery time, right? You yeah, still have all yeah, the wrappers yep, on it? Yep, yep, <laughs> I haven't touched anything yet. So what all do you guys have to do here, part of the PDI experience? So you have to work on getting all like the tape off, what else? Yep, yep, so that is completely up to the customer, whether they want us to peel the tape or anything like that. Um, so when it came in off the hauler, I told the prep department not to touch the vehicle at all. We haven't done any PDI to it whatsoever. The front splitter is still off of the vehicle, which is in the uh, passenger seat, but we took it off uh, so that you could sit in it. Um, and then the wheel lip fairing moldings are still not installed. As you see, the wheel gap is still pretty substantial because the, yeah. those spacers are still in there from the uh, shipping company. And then, uh, yeah, it's got all the plastic on the inside. We have not touched it in any way. Has it not been washed or anything? So, <laughs> so where would all those upgrades be? Oh, well, the PDI features. Is it like oh, yeah. the GT500 was? Yeah, so the front splitter is always in the passenger front seat all the way into the rear of the vehicle because they can't fit it anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. um, now, for the wing on the uh, handling package vehicles, you do get the gurney flap, and it is in the trunk area with the wheel lip moldings and they do secure in about the same position as oh, yeah. the GT500. Um, yeah. And then here they are right here. So here's the wheel lip moldings. These are splitter wickers for up front. And then this is the uh, actual gurney flap, which I haven't even opened it yet. So let's take a look and see what this yeah, thing this looks is like. unboxing day right here. Yep, <laughs> there it is. It's just piano black, gloss wow. painted, so. And you're gonna be installing that soon, right? You're not gonna drive this without the gurney flap no, on the no. back? No, I'm probably gonna to have to <laughs> install all that stuff. Uh, and then clear bra and ceramic coating and stuff like that, so. Then with the gurney flap, the height will probably match the end plates on the spoiler, right? It'll be closer. So it is gonna be, yeah, so it will match up to here and it is this color to match right here, this gloss black. I see you've got the uh, window sticker right here. How much does this come out to be out the door? So, so 73,805 dollars and that includes all the options that you have yep. here yep are you finding majority of uh, customers are going after all the handling package upgrades and features or so just when depend? when i was the first one to order ford actually came back and emailed the owner and said your first order has to have these couple things one of them was the handling package every first order had to have the handling package um the painted stripe option was not a big deal. You did not have to order that. The carbon fiber wheels was late availability, yeah. which I did not choose either of those options. The carbon wheels being $8,500 and then the painted stripe was $5,000. Um, at the time that I ordered this, they were not allowing this appearance package, which comes with this blue ember metallic paint and the custom calipers and then the custom uh, stripe on it and then the painted roof. So I, had some contacts, I made some phone calls and I was able to get the car <laughs> nice. built and it's pretty low chassis number, it's number 506 ever Oh, they built. chassis number these? Yep, yep. It's really, right and that'll be on side. the, can I open this? Yep, With absolutely. the tape there anyways. Then you are chassis number 506. Are these vehicles 
um, very limited like the Shelby's were, or is this gonna be a package that just escalates the Mustang GT to the next level? So I wouldn't put it on the same level as the Shelby GT500 in aspects of allocation and ordering. Uh, we have five allocations already, all of them are filled. Four out of the five are already scheduled for build, if not built already. We did get our second one in today. That's a non-handling package car, same color, but non-handling package. So the Shelby's year after year was one or two and only one track pack every year. Um, when I got my Heritage Edition last year, it was the only Heritage that I was allowed to get. Um, so I wouldn't say they're as limited production, but they still are limited production, not as many numbers as the Mustang GT. And I almost forgot to mention, if you guys need a new Ford, a new Ford Mustang, well, he's the Ford Performance Specialist here. Yep. So you specialize in all these kinds of cars. Yep, absolutely. Makes sense that, that you got one too. I love that you're an actual enthusiast who likes these cars <laughs> and gets them because there's so many Ford deals across the country where the people running them are involved aren't really truly passionate about this stuff, yep, right? Yep, and then absolutely. when I can have a true conversation with you about this vehicle and also, you know, you gotta get to the track with it sometime, yep. that makes it even better. So you mind if we take it off for a spin? Absolutely, you're driving. Oh, thank you. All right, here we go. Inside is brand new Dark Horse. Thank you, Joey, yep. so much. I, I can't wait. I love the brand new shift knob in this car, by the way. Is this aluminum or is it? It's uh, 3D printed titanium. Titanium. It feels really nice. It matches uh, the blue theme for the vehicle. All right, here we go. First startup from myself with the Dark Horse, your brand new delivered car. So this is the standard uh, look for the front display. Changing the drive mode to a uh, sport. It gives you a new illustration of corners. And yeah, let's see how, how that looks. Okay. Oh, it's it kind of BMW-ish to me. Yeah, that, like the M3 honestly, M4. I don't, know how I, uh, I don't know if I'd run that one. <laughs> it's kind of hard. Uh, I guess I'm just see where that red line is. Yeah, it might take a while to get used to that personally. Uh, but finally going to track, we have. Yeah, that would be one of my favorites. The Ford GT inspired display. Yeah, the Ford GT looks very similar to that. It goes from left to right and it climbs from the left side and then it gets wider and wider in the higher RPMs. Then finally you have drag strip mode, which should change the magna ride suspension settings to give you more flex for launching hard. And it'll change all. The same. Yep, it'll be just like track mode. Then you have slippery for the wet, which I presume is like normal. Alrighty, yeah, well, like normal. let's go ahead and uh, not drive in wet mode. One thing I do like about having the flatter roads out here in, in Michigan is that you don't have crazy dips like in California. Yeah. It's very frightening in California at times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what I'm noticing with is just this is way more smooth than the MT82. It just yeah, 100%. feels even the clutch feels better. To everything. Me. I just feel like this is the way the Mustang GT should, should be having this kind of transmission, the 3160, like in the past with the uh, S550. I just felt like it was nice having the manual, but I, I always loved the GT350, a 3160 Tremec. It just yep. feels so tactile, just so yep. engaging. I, I think this on track, you would have a ton of fun with it. But yep, you have hill start assist, just like the previous gen. I'll keep it under 4,000 RPM for you. Yeah, brand yep. new car. Good for me. <laughs> wow. Break it in the proper way. <laughs> yeah, thank you for letting me break in your, your car real briefly. Yeah, um, absolutely. It feels like you can have so much fun with this. Mind if I pop it into track mode right. just to see if the exhaust changes at all a little bit. Up traction yep. control is turning off. Stage one is, is off. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh gosh, I can't wait for this new GTD to come out, man. This whole next generation for Mustang is looking so exciting. Yes, oh, they're giving is. us a thumbs up right there. <laughs> <laughs> so how would that downshifting work with the rev match? So as soon as you go to engage it to the next year, we're in fourth gear to go so down to clutch third. In and just let it do its thing. Oh yep, yeah. very smooth. Yep. Oh, I love that sound. That active rev matching feels so natural. 
Yeah, on the track in the GT350, that was always one thing for me that I always had to think about it. Oh my gosh, next corner, heel, toe. And interestingly, you know how on the Mustangs, the brake pedal is closer towards you yep. than the gas pedal? So at times, it took a while to try to get myself familiar again with the pedal layout because you have to brake hard to initiate that little absolutely. wrap around yep, to flip absolutely. the throttle. So this has got, you know, the 373 gears that the Shelby's had, the 500 horsepower, a platform i think on track man you're gonna have so much fun i love all the carbon fiber inspired features through the interior the blue stitching yeah they did a great job and have you noticed that it's definitely shrunken down so you have a lot more yeah. leg room than the s550 and it's more sectioned towards the driver so you can uh, see the screens a little bit better These guys are just it's, it's so fun, man. I mean, just revving to 3,500 RPM, it's 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 pretty torquey engine. Yeah, thank you again for the chance to take sure. out this car. I really appreciate it. So we're in fourth, fifth would be in the far right. Yep, just like my GT350 was. You make me miss not having a Mustang, you know yeah. that? Yeah, is... <laughs> Maybe we'll have to get you back into one yeah, here shortly, yeah. hopefully. I, I'm crossing my fingers that we get the, uh, I get the approval for the new Mustang GTD, but Again, I was very curious about this car because I know it's a lot of money, but getting inside, it's got the amenities and the newer technology that I would have liked out of, the, well, to be in the GT500, for example, because that can be a $100,000 car. Yep. Uh, the displays, having the classic mode that gives you the Fox body look. How do you put that back on again? So Mustang button down here, cluster theme, scroll down. And it's right there at Fox Body Cluster. So there you and go. And now you've got now the Fox Body Fox setting. Body. Yeah. And at <laughs> night it so illuminates trippy. green just like the original Fox Body. How do you think it handles? Now it does have the spacers in it, but I mean, the feel of the steering and everything feels pretty tight, doesn't it? It does. You know, it, I love the transmission, the gear changes. The whole car itself feels just more technologically and advanced. Yep. Um, and that's one thing technology always really helps you but it doesn't feel like the technology is taking anything away from the driving experience sometimes cars feel a bit too digital um, but it still feels like a proper mustang with the manual i think you got to get the manual for this car yeah the automatic will be probably faster for accelerating but you buy this for being a driver's car how many cars out there have manuals anymore basically none right yep, not many. um and then not many. With, with the platform you have right here with this new engine i can't wait to see modifications for them right because yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the potential is to be higher than the previous Eco, uh, not Eco Boost, uh, the Coyote. Uh, so, like, will, will he mod this car? Do you think, or keep it uh, stock? I'm not 100% sure yet. This is a car where I might just keep it stock. I got that, I got the Shelby that's modified, and that's plenty of power. This is going to be just a nice driver vehicle, man, and really enjoy the the tech in it and all the features and just how it sounds and feels stock. I might maybe uh, make it a little bit louder, uh, but. Uh, no, it sounds good. It does. It sounds really good. Hopefully that's not true, but it's saying we're averaging about 5.5 miles per gallon. Yeah. So, hey. <laughs> you would have to reset that. Yeah. <laughs> you can reset it, and then we can oh, uh, see what it's what it's putting out. Have all the gauges all ready to go, just like yeah, the Shelby. Yeah, which I haven't even fooled with that yet. I haven't even looked through any of those. It looks like it's got all the gauges the Shelby has, all the trans temp, axle temp. dude that's fun you know i'm excited to get a little bit more seat time in it of course it's almost the middle to the end of september now here in michigan so we're yeah. not going to be able to drive it uh too many more you know times here before i got to put it away um but uh i'm excited to really you know sit down in the car and go over all the features and save my modes like that's the exciting yeah, thing yeah, for me yeah. and and peeling all the plastic off and uh and cleaning it for the first time that is going to be an exciting you know portion for me and uh, i can't just wait. excited to get some more seat time let me know when you go to the track sometime well one final thing i want to mention uh having these trofeo rs tires i've never driven a car that has trofeo rs tires and um i'm curious to find out how they will perform on the track for consecutive lap times because physically they look just like the uh goodyear 3rs that i've run on my mclaren and those tires are fantastic it doesn't look like it's on the same scale as a uh, michelin pilot sport cup 2r which that could be good and bad because um, the Cup 2Rs are extremely fast, probably the fastest tires you can buy, but the wear factor is 
uh, fast as well because it's a softer compound. I'm curious with these, how long they will last in comparison. I think lap times, this should run some pretty good times, but I guess we're going to have to find out uh, and wait for that. Even with the braking setup, like it looks just like the GT350. So um, for the tire and the mechanical grip factor with braking, uh, I think you probably won't be disappointed. We'll see what well, when you do drive your car hard. Yep. Let me know how it compares against the GT500 you have All right, for yeah. the handling. Yep. I'm curious. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much Thank again, you, Joey. Thank you, you guys for coming need out. a Mustang. Hit him up. Okay, here we go. Just got out of the dark horse. I want to wrap up with my final conclusions. I, I do think that um, this vehicle was a ton of fun to drive. I do want to talk about the price point. So around $73,000, $74,000 is what um, he paid for this vehicle right in front of me. And to put that into context, the uh, GT500 starting price is around $70,000, making this more expensive than a no option GT500. I do think the GT500 has a lot more performance baked in with it, having the 760 horsepower engine. Uh, however, what this has going for it, in my opinion, is since it is the newest and latest thing, having a, a newer warranty as well, the interior on top of everything else is the biggest, I'd say, a highlight for me. I love seeing that new interior, the new technology, the displays, the 13 half inch uh, center screen display, the 12 inch instrument cluster in front, of, in front of you, the LCD screens. Everything feels polished out. Whereas the complaints in the past with Mustangs having very cheap interiors, well, this takes it to a whole other level. That is what I love most about the car. I do like the styling as well. It all depends on if you want the most performance possible, yeah, probably the, the Shelby's of the past will, will give you more with the GT500 for a similar price if you can find one. If you want the next, the next thing, the next best thing from Ford, it's going to be this. So it really depends what you're going after. There are more performance options you can get for uh, the same price, but they will not be the new name around the block the dark horse. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, hit the notification bell so you do not miss a single video. Thank you to Pat Milliken Ford. I'll see all of you in the next one.